Guys, you take a look at any Off-White Air Force One on the aftermarket and they're all pretty much reselling from anywhere between 1 to 2k. Or how about the Virgil Abloh Louis Vuitton collaboration that literally got auctioned off for $350,000? So how come these latest Off-White Air Force Ones are only reselling for like a smidge over retail, if that? Well today, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay guys, here we go. This gets me excited because we got a pretty special unboxing experience. I always love it when collaborators just do something crazy with the box and Off-White has always been really good at that. It's literal bricks all over it and just the tiny little text on the top saying Off-White Co. Nike. Open it up and you're getting hit with some more freaking color. This box looks insane. Just all over green, you got the off-white branding, the Nike branding. Look at this paper as well, all over blue. But of course, as nice as all of that is, we do need to pull out today's pair of sneakers. And guys, it is the crazy off-white Air Force One mid. These things are so heavy. Nevertheless, here they are. This is the latest Off-White collaboration. And I gotta say something pretty crazy is I actually won a raffle for the black pair. Um, however, these are the ones that showed up, which I'm not too mad about. I actually think I prefer the white pair, so I'm happy I actually caught these randomly. These actually dropped today. That is June the 23rd. And of course, that is both colorways, the predominantly white and the all over black pair. They retail for the pretty high £165 and $185 out in the US. And they seemed relatively easy to get your hands on. Like if you entered enough raffles, you should have got a pair if you really wanted them. But I guess that kind of goes for any shoe that resellers stay away from. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Why did resellers stay away from this shoe? Why do these seem so much less in demand than other off-white collaborations? Well, there's a few reasons, not just one obvious reason. I guess the first one, let's just address it. It's a uh, Air Force One mid. Now, even though I'm personally quite a big fan of Air Force One mids, I think they look pretty cool. Most people aren't. Like a perfect example would be the Stussy collaboration on the Air Force One. They did the exact same color, same material, same everything on a low and a min, you can see that the lows are reselling for like double, maybe even triple the price of those mids. Okay, but it's still an off-white collaboration. Well, track spikes, guys track spikes. Freaking track spikes. I think most people just dislike the track spikes on their shoes. I mean, if we take a look at the past off-white sneakers that Virgil added these track spikes to, they're all pretty down bad. Waffle Racers, Zoom Tempos, Vapor Streets, Terra Kygers, they all go for retail or under. So these spikes, although they're not exactly plastered all over the outsole, they are on the front and I guess the middle of the shoe. Now, if you thought that you were gonna get these in, you were gonna cut these spikes off well I got some bad news for you. Maybe it could work for the front of the shoe. Maybe you could get your razor knife in there and slice all of these off and that could look pretty cool because other than the spikes there's nothing really sticking out but listen buddy good luck trying to cut this huge chunk of just straight up rubber off of the side of the shoe. I 
mean, by all means, give it your best shot, but I don't think it would look great. It's literally just a block of rubber that kind of just has been inserted into the midsole of this shoe and it just sticks out and again, it has all of those spikes on it. Now the spikes did another thing, which I think is pretty unfortunate. They made this kind of, I guess, forefoot or the front of the shoe kind of almost swoop up at the front, which doesn't really look great. Normally Air Force Ones kind of sit mostly flat on a flat surface, but these definitely just kind of tilt up and it does look like your toe is just kind of doing that motion, which I don't think is my favorite look on a pair of shoes. But uh, barring all of the spikes, the midsole is really interesting. You got this really weird melted kind of look, specifically at the back, you can see it's all wavy and just kind of squished down, which I think is super cool. It's really, really interesting. I think it's a design element that people would appreciate a lot more if it you know, wasn't for the spikes. You can also see the air unit, which I think is really interesting. The majority of the material on the upper is made up of this very thin, I guess, mesh material. Now, unfortunately, that leaves the toe box pretty much clear, so you can definitely see your feet on the inside. But I will say that that is only for the toe box. The rest of the shoe is like reinforced with an underneath material, a backing, so obviously it keeps its shape around the toe box. Um, it feels pretty thin, definitely very breathable, I will give it that. And it's got all of the off-white signatures, starting with the text on the medial side of the shoe. You get that on both the right and the left. You've got the barely stitched on transparent Nike swooshes. And on the outside, you are getting that orange tag, that signature off-white orange tag, and that is just stitched down, which again looks pretty cool. Zip tie, of course, in a vibrant, loud orange color. Um, I typically wouldn't wear my pairs of shoes with this zip tie. And then you're getting overlaces as well, which is something we saw on like all of the Nike off-white dunks um, and that just kind of zigzags across the shoe on this white colorway. It's gray laces with the, uh, I guess, traditional lacing all over white. You get a lace toggle, which I thought was pretty interesting. It is something you can remove if you want to. At the top of the tongue, you're getting a pretty cool little embroidered logo, which has the Nike swoosh along with this, I guess, almost graffiti style font, which says air. Thankfully, no large circular holes placed all around the shoe. Honestly, with everything going on with this pair of shoes, it can get pretty chaotic. Finally, sizing, um, I would actually go a half size down. Um, it really just depends what you do with your Air Force One mids. But yeah, I went a half size down on these and I think it fits perfectly. I mean, hey, if crazy out there sneakers aren't your thing, these are probably a pass. Again, they're crazy, they're out there, they're loud. But I think for an interesting piece of Virgil Abloh's legacy, they're pretty cool. If you are someone who, again, prefers more subtle sneakers, I'd probably go for the black colorway. That one seems to be just a little bit more subtle than this one. This is definitely the loud out there crazy colorway. I do want to hear your thoughts. Let me know down in the comment section. What do you think about these? Thank you so much for coming through, hanging out, liking, commenting, and of course subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then.